What we're looking at right now is if your motor starts too often. Here's some of the things that you're gonna to wanna to check um, and they may have to do with what's going on. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna look at, pressure switch. Now obviously before we start working on that pressure switch, we wanna make sure that that power breaker is off. Now our power breaker is off. Uh, so we're safe to go ahead and remove the top of this and take a look in here. Now what you're looking for, you're looking for anything that seems defective, melted, burnt, um, covered in carbon, which is generally black. Um, and now these contacts should be closed um, if the system is not pressurized. They'd be open if the system is pressurized. Currently this system is pressurized. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go open a valve up real quickly and these contacts should close. By opening that valve, I close those contacts, and now what I've essentially confirmed is that the contacts on this pressure switch are opening and closing as they should. Now, another level of check that I could perform here is try to run the pump through a cycle. Um, so in the instance that you are, uh, the motor starting too often, obviously the pump is able to run. So let's run it through a cycle. Keep an eye on your pressure gauge. See exactly uh, what that system is doing. Are the contacts opening and closing when they should? If they're not, you may need to adjust the settings inside the pressure switch. Um, and if you need a tip or some advice on how to adjust those, we have put together a video on adjusting the pressure switch. So keep an eye out for that. Additionally, uh, if you do find that, for example, these points are really dirty or, or blackened, um, you can take a wire brush and try to scrub them up and, and clean them uh, as best you can. That may give it the better contact so the pump is not starting and stopping frequently. Uh, another thing to keep out, keep an eye out for is this tube. This, uh, this tube here can potentially get uh, sediment and debris uh, plugged up in it, and then the pressure switch is not accurately reading what the water pressure is, so it can cause it to kind of act up or be sluggish or potentially overreactive, depending on what the situation is. So if you do find that you're in a situation where the, the pressure switch seems to be somewhat irreparable, um, like it's not opening and closing as it should, you've tried to adjust it, what have you, before you sink a ton of time into trying to rebuild the thing, they're generally replaceable for less than about $20. Uh, so I would recommend replacing the pressure switch before trying to rebuild it or something along those lines. They're typically quite a reliable component. So if you find yourself in a scenario where your pressure switches are failing rapidly, then there's something else going wrong. So on to the next thing that we can check we're gonna talk about the pressure tank. Um, so the pressure tank, what you wanna do is be able to test if the tank is waterlogged. Now my favorite test is to take something uh, metallic or even a piece of wood or something like that uh, and, and tap on the tank itself. It should sound relatively dull, like a dull thud at the bottom and then it should sound hollow on top. And that indicates that the bladder, which is ro located relatively uh, in the center here, is, is functioning as it should. Another thing that we can do is we can drain all the pressure from the system by opening that valve the rest of the way. And then we can put a pressure gauge on the top and make sure that the pressure is at the appropriate pressure. So we'll do that now. All right, so the reason why you wanna make sure that you drain the pressure from the system when you check the pressure tank, and now I just have a standard, um, essentially what I would use to check the pressure on my tire uh, for my car or bicycle. But the reason that you want to drain the pressure off of the system, because if the system is pressurized to let's say 60 PSI and it shuts off, well, the tank is gonna read 60 PSI. What we're wanting to test here is not the system pressure. We can tell that by looking at this gauge. What we're trying to tell is what this tank's charge is and whether or not it's holding the amount of air it should. In this situation, we're running a 40-60 split, meaning the pump turns on at 40 PSI off at 60. So this tank should have about 37 to 38 PSI. Now, if you're curious on adjusting or setting your pressure tank, um, and we're exactly at 38, by the way. If you're curious on how to, to actually uh, adjust your pressure tank settings and so forth, we do have a video for that, um, so check that one out. So the next subject that we're gonna cover that can cause rapid cycling, um, 
is leaks within the system. If you have a leak either uh, after the pressure tank or before the pressure tank, it's possible for the pump to just continue to cycle whether you're using water or not. And generally, uh, the bigger the leak, the pump, the pump may just continue to run and never shut off. And that's, that's where we'll transition into some other troubleshooting uh, on a future video. But uh, in general, what you wanna do if you find yourself in a situation where the pump is, uh, is shutting on and off too frequently. Uh, maybe that's an indication that you've got uh, a leak somewhere in the system. And so you want to check for leaks. Look for wet spots. Look uh, anywhere that you possibly can. Um, try to listen for that running water. This is a ball valve. Many of you may know that already. Um, it, when it comes to troubleshooting or, or looking for leaks within a system, um, the more ball valves that you have, uh, the easier it is going to be for you to isolate certain sections of the system to determine where the leak is. So if in this situation I had a ball valve uh, right here, I could turn that valve off once the system's built up to pressure. And uh, if no pressure loss occurred, that would tell me that the leak is in the well. If pressure loss occurred, then that would tell me that the leak is down that way somewhere, so. All right, and now we're on to the final thing that you're gonna wanna take a look at, and this is probably uh, the least accessible thing in most submersible well pump systems. That's your check valve. Um, so we've got a check valve right here at the, top of the, uh, at the top of our little pump basin. And basically, if a check valve gets stuck open, it can cause your system to overcycle because that water is siphoning back down through the pump. Uh, so be aware of that. And it may be a situation where you've got to pull the pump out uh, to prevent that. There's another option though. You could potentially add a check valve as a somewhat of a temporary fix above ground to prevent that bleeding back occurring. And generally, when it comes to check valves, your only solution is replacement. They're not very rebuildable, um, so just replace it. I would recommend spending the extra money on a, a high-end check valve and avoid anything uh, that, that is not of quality. So uh, just be aware of that as well. So now we're gonna be moving on to our next video. And in that video, we're gonna cover if your operating system pressure is low or if the system is not shutting off altogether.